Oh, yeah, this is a very good book. <laughs> I thought so. We're I'm good? reading it backwards right now, and it's That's still... That's totally fine. It's you a, can read it any way you like. It's a total like. page turner. You... Like the Torah. <laughs> right to left. Who is the... Uh, <laughs> Who's the kid on the front? That's Valeria. Malaria? She... <laughs> <laughs> you named a kid Malaria? Can I tell you a trick? If you want to be observant, her name is across the front of her hard hat. Oh, yeah. I mean, you don't have yeah. to. I... Oh, yeah, yeah. I wasn't going to point that out. To. There was a glare on it. But for a delightful minute, I thought, honestly, if you got a kid named Malaria, well, who else am I going to find inside this book? Diphtheria? Right. Who knows? Is she the in there? Oregon Trail. What about Typhus? Typhus? I don't I... know. <laughs> Typhus, I feel like, could be a real name. It could be. Could be. Um, that's probably a good place to start this thing, because with Katie Hughes, our guest today, a name like Typhus is possible for the simple reason that everything is possible. <laughs> uh, she has a, a new book, which I have to start by apologizing. I did see it. When it came out, you sent it to me around the holidays, and I, and I wanted to plug it shamelessly, but I was just up to my neck, Katie, and plugging other things shamelessly, <laughs> so it had to wait. This is fine, you know. It's fine. Look what we're, we're plugging it now. Fantastic. How's the book doing? It's doing well. It's doing well. Um, I mean, it came out in you know October 2020, so it wasn't quite what I had pictured or planned. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. But um it's but it's doing well. It's doing well. Yeah. The book is called Girls Who Build. It's obviously inspired by the nonprofit foundation uh that you run that brought us together initially mm -hmm. way back in what? 2017 maybe? 2017. Yeah. Yep. Man. So, full disclosure, just to uh just to jog my memory mm -hmm. uh because Katie you know I'm Hughes. old. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know I got your name wrong. I still get your name wrong from time to time. You're not Katie Holmes. No. Um, it's it's the, and, and she's not malaria. And she's either. not malaria. Yeah. So no, there's nobody in this book called malaria. Um, <laughs> but but you do look timeless. You look exactly as I remember you. So I guess we should just start with how was that experience for you? We didn't we, we didn't screw up your nonprofit, did we? <laughs> yeah, we we are actually defunct now because of mm. you. Um, it, sorry. <laughs> no, I mean that process. That process was amazing. Number one, okay, we make jokes about me living in Portland. I don't have a TV. I had never seen Dirty John. <laughs> I did not know who you were. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so, like, and my sister, when I was like coming over here, she was like, "Are you going to do a better job than when you what you did on returning the favor?" You know? And I was like, "I did a great job." She's like, "No, you did a flat." Like, uh, um, maybe. Maybe we should start at the beginning, you know? I mean, what mm -hmm. what were the circumstances that led you to become a champion for getting girls into the trades? Okay, Girls Build specifically, I started um, because I had been, um, I'd been a carpenter and I loved it. And I had then gone on to work at another nonprofit profit where I taught women how to get into the trades. But part of my job was to start a girls summer camp to, to introduce the trades to them. And I did that for um, eight summers. So eight, seven years, eight summers. And then I left that job just because I had kind of burned out. And I went on to teach um, the trades to high, mostly high school boys, a few girls, but mostly juniors and seniors in high school at a trade school. So I was the mm -hmm. construction teacher. And I did that for two years. And during my second year, um, that old program of mine, it got cut by our old nonprofit. And so I had all these tradesmen coming to me saying, wow, you know, bummer about, you know, the program. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, bummer. You know, and they'd be like, what are we going to do about the future? Like, I don't know. Like, yeah, like, we, how are we going to teach these girls, you know? And, and finally, I, I was at the coast and I ran into an electrician and she finally goes, Katie, you know, when everyone is saying, what are we going to do? What we're trying to say is, what are you going to do? And I was like, oh, no, I had not I had not picked up on that. <laughs> like, yeah. you basically hit me over the head with it multiple times, and I had not picked up on that. It took me a minute to realize that, that like, 
I really could do whatever I wanted. And so one of the first things I did was I gathered a group of tradeswomen in my living room. I made a big pot of soup and I said, what did we like about the old program? What do we want to scrap and what are our dreams? And we wrote it all down and we kind of just pushed it forward from there. So that's how the program started. I was working my other job and then I left that job and a few months later we had our first camp and off and running. But it's a big shift to your point, teaching grown-ups who, mm -hmm. you know, have a lot of life experience and for whatever reason have deliberately chosen to mm -hmm. hop on a new path versus kids who are, what are they, like 6 to 12 or 14? Eight, uh, 8 to 15 now, yeah. 8 to 15, right. So they, you know, being exposed maybe for the very first time in their life, mm -hmm. you know, they don't know what they don't know. So Exactly. Right. That's They're the seeing, part. Yeah. You don't really get to know what kind of impact you're having, you know, during the summer. I mean, you can see it, right? You can see it in the kid's face. You can see the enthusiasm, but it mm -hmm. takes a few years to see if they're going to get on that path. How mm -hmm. many eight-year-olds now mm -hmm. who are in their mid-teens uh, are still on that road? Right. The big difference between teaching adult women and teaching girls is um, kind of a fun difference, which is my main goal for a day at camp is for them to have the most fun possible. And they don't have to know that this is leading somewhere else. They just have to know that they love it. And that part is incredible. Um, they, that part of catching them so young when they don't know anything and they don't know that they, they, they don't know people. I get a lot of question like, how, how, how is it to teach girls, you know, that they can do something that they're not supposed to do. And I was like, we don't tell them that. Like, I don't tell them that they are not supposed to do it. We just do it with them um, and let them have that fun and have that adventure. I get emails from parents. Oh, it's Christmas. And, and my daughter wants X, Y, Z tool. What do I, what do I get? Where do I go? And I love it that, that we are changing these basic things about like, birthdays and Christmases of what is coming under the tree or what is coming, you know, as their birthday present, um, all of those things, that's, that's like right off the bat at eight years old, they're getting excited about that. I was mm -hmm. just at my sister's house right now. My niece is now 12 and, um, she's like, you know, starting to be a teenager. And I got there at like 11 and she like came out of her room for the first time. Right. And she's come to camp this whole time and she comes out and she, and she's like kind of sleeping. She's like, mom, do you have a stud finder? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I was like, I love this conversation. <laughs> I'm writing that down because it could very well turn into the title of this episode. Mom, do you have a stud do finder? Do you have a stud yeah, finder? Perfect. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, we normally don't hot. stumble across our titles until very, very late in the episode, but you came out pretty hot with that one. Oh, good. good. Um, 